Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio today, she is the Community Engagement Director for the New York Women in Film and Television. Uh, it's Miss Katie Chambers. Welcome, Katie. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for coming. Uh, we appreciate you making the schlep to Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, as always. Um, <laughs> From Midtown. And uh, so I want to talk about Nywift and yes. about the stuff that you guys do for filmmakers. But first, let's talk a little bit about you. Sure. So how did you get into this crazy industry? Like, what is your origin story, so to speak? Mm, like a superhero. Okay. Well, I grew up in New Jersey, always loved TV, film, and theater, went to school, uh, to college for theater, um, studied mostly directing and stage managing. It was at Drew University, so it was a great um, theater program there. Also studied English while I was there. Um, was looking to get into the business side of things, always felt like I did best on the organizational side, um, connecting teams, putting people together. So I became really interested in producing theater, um, ended up getting internships at Manhattan Theater Club, working in company management, and also with Scott Rudin Productions. Um, especially loved working there because I was an English major and so much of the work that Scott produces is based on books. It's a lot of adaptations. And he also does film and Broadway and, and now TV also. Um, he wasn't doing TV when I was there, but he does it now. So I was always interested and somebody who could kind of connect all of those things together. Um, ended up working for a talent agency, became an assistant uh, to a talent agent working with kids and teens and young adults. Again, found another job where I could kind of combine my love of theater and TV and film all at the same time. Um, ended up loving the agency world, got promoted to agent, did that for a little while, and uh, then I moved on to work at, at NYWIFT. Having said that, it leaves me a perfect uh, segue, uh, which I'm getting better at these days, uh, <laughs> to uh, what is, like, so it's New York Women in Film and Television. Yes, exactly. And um, so, and you guys have been around, you were saying you've been around for how 40, many years? 41 years. 41 it started, years. It started in 1977. Actually, it started on the night of the great New York City blackout of 1977. Oh, my we God. We can trace it back to July 13th. We know it was that date because the lights went out during the meeting. Oh, my God. That's we, so cool. It was all the lady power in the room that yeah. caused, <laughs> caused the blackout. At least that's what we like to tell everybody. Uh, yeah, there's a, actually there's so many things that started right around there. It's yeah. almost like an inception date for so many things. Yes. Um, so uh, 41 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so what do you guys do? What do you how do you help? What do you what's right. your kind of mission statement? Right. And how do you help well, filmmakers? Our, our official mission, we're a nonprofit professional association for women working in TV, film and digital media. Um, we produce more than 50 professional development programs a year for our members. Um, we advocate for equality in the entertainment industry. We celebrate women's achievements, and we fund women filmmakers and preserve films by women through our Women's Film Preservation Fund. Very cool. Very cool. So um, now uh, you being, uh, you know, uh, you got women in the title. Right. But um, can I join your club? You totally can join our okay. club. We would love to have you join our club. We have men who are members. Um, obviously, we have more female members than we have gentlemen, but we have a, a great, strong, small contingent of guys that, that are members. They come to a lot of our events. You know, we want to make sure that everybody's included. We don't see the point in having an organization that's about inclusion and then immediately shutting half of the people out of the room that's not, <laughs> that's that's the exact kind of uh, thing that we're trying to fight so we want to make sure that the guys are coming that they're networking with these great female filmmakers and hopefully hiring them and working with them that's great because you know um you can't you kind of with especially with film in, in more than probably any other art form you can't make them in a vacuum no and you need um, everybody, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I've always said on this show, and I've had a lot of women on the show, mm -hmm. but my, my goal is when I make stuff is to have everybody because I want all the good ideas. Yes. And uh, I think good ideas are uh, regardless of gender or uh, race or ethnicity or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you guys, in terms of, because I know that you guys have certain programs that you do for people. Right. Um, what can you uh, kind of give me some of those? And, yeah. Like what? What do you guys do? Well, we're we're very busy. Um, we have a core set of about forty to fifty professional development panels and workshops that we do throughout the year in New York City. 
our membership is really diverse in terms of professions. So we have about 2,400 members. Um, they, it's a lot of directors and producers, but we also have people working below the line, writers, actors, agents, attorneys, managers, TV executives. So our programming really reflects that diversity. So we'll do panels about you know, how to adapt a screenplay from a book, how to sell your screenplay to an agent, how to get cast in a comedy sitcom. We'll have hands-on workshops about the latest camera technology where you can try it out. So it is definitely a mix. Um, we have a couple signature programs that we do throughout the year. Um, we have the Writers Lab for women screenwriters over the age of 40. So we're fighting sexism and ageism at the same time. Um, we're well known for that in part because it's funded by Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman. Uh, Meryl has funded it every year since its inception. We're doing the fifth one this year uh, in September. So that's for women screenwriters over 40. They come, they do a retreat in either upstate New York or Connecticut, depending on where we decide that year. And they work one-on-one -on -one with industry mentors. So established writers and producers who work on their scripts with them, talk to them about the industry, how, how to get something into production, what the different steps are. Other signature programs we have from script to pre-production, which is a, which a six month workshop going on right now. It started in January and runs through June um, where about 10 or so filmmakers come in once a week. They meet on Friday nights and they go through the whole pre-production process. So they're about to make a feature film and they learn the basics of how to put a package together, how to pitch your project to agents, how to hire, how to refine your screenplay before you go into production. Just all those steps that they don't necessarily teach you um, in film school. No, and, and surprisingly, um, because a lot of that stuff is the stuff you need to know yeah. like because uh it's one thing to learn how to make a movie but th how to sell a movie how to actually yes. get a movie made uh is the harder end of the equation um yeah. and it's uh i mean it's i think it's bloody difficult for just about anybody mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to like film finance and you yes. know things like that um and to me it's just i i hate that stuff like i just i don't want to <laughs> yeah uh pre-production is not my fun time it's not the fun time for most oh. people i don't think it's not it's not the glamorous part of the job you know it's not on set with actors but it's such an important part of the preparation for for putting your project together and and that's the, what we're trying to do you know we can't give somebody a job but we can give them all of the skills and everything in their toolkit so that they can be as ready as possible to be hired and and to work i see a lot of organizations out there and i see a lot of sort of party making and uh networking blah 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 we do that too you know which is great we throw good parties but um and i see a lot of especially in the arts i see like a lot of inspirational platitudes right you know which is <laughs> yeah. like you know anybody can kind of put a meme on instagram but right. my my maxim for this show and, and sort of in life is mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, inspiration is great, but information is better. Yes. You know, and if you give people solid information, because uh, you can motivate the hell out of somebody. <laughs> right. But if they're an idiot <laughs> and they don't know anything, <laughs> yes. they're not going to they're not going to be successful. Exactly. Um, so and, you know, something like, you know, it, it's very specific, like with the screenwriting thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's great because we do when you see the stories that we've got now, like I'm always an advocate for better stories. And I don't care mm -hmm. who writes them, but. Mm -hmm. Definitely, women over 40 seem to be a disappearing demographic yes. uh, on screen. Yes. Uh, and it's we've talked about it here on the show before when we did the New York Television Festival. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, people, this uh, executive from CBS, she's like, I think her, her title has, she's like a director of diversity and inclusion. Yeah, uh, a and, lot of the networks have that now. Which, which is, I think, good because it would be nice if we just did this stuff. <laughs> And it was like, and we didn't have to, like somebody didn't have to tell you, you know, but uh, apparently we do. I always <laughs> say, you know, the best day for me is going to be when I'm out of a job and that this isn't <laughs> necessary anymore, but it's been, it's been necessary for 41 years. Yeah. I mean, our founder, one of, one of our co-founders, um, Lenore DeCoven, who... Um, spoke at one of our 40th anniversary parties, gave this amazing inspirational speech. But part of what she said was, you know, I she's so thrilled to see how the organization is grown and so disappointed that it still needs to exist. Yeah, and that's well, just the perfect way to say I it. I think that's kind of for any organization, but I, filmmakers on a whole, on, as a whole, because uh, we were talking before we yeah. uh, we rolled here, and uh, we all need help. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not I don't think it's an easy industry for anyone. So right. and, you know, this show is dedicated to helping filmmakers and content creators. And I, mm -hmm. I think if we can help anybody um, by letting them know that you guys exist and, you know, they think that's the 
that's the remedy for them or that's the thing that's going to get them to be successful, then great. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, you know, it would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be nice if we didn't need organizations like this. But yeah. I think filmmakers or anybody in the arts is definitely going to need help, you know, for as long as the arts exist. Um, until, you know, they become, well, they are extremely profitable in certain sec sectors. But, sure. Um, you know, the um, we were talking before, like, so what I want to kind of also highlight about the organization is like, I think it's great. These programs sound great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th this is stuff that I think anybody can use, especially like writing always needs to be better. Mm -hmm. Pre-production always needs to be better. Ask any producer I've ever worked with. They're like, you know, prep, prep, prep. Yeah. Uh, and because most people don't know what they're doing in that because right. you get taught so many production things in school mm -hmm. or, you know, on a set that you, but all the stuff leading up into that, which is really important. Yeah. You know, it doesn't uh, necessarily happen when you're in a classroom. Yeah. But, um, what kind of can you give me some highlights or some uh, success stories that sure. come out of Nywift? Um, one of my please brag. Yes, hap happily, I'll always brag. One of my absolute favorite stories is we had, we get a lot of screenings throughout the year. We do our own screening series. We have a monthly member screening series where we show our members work, um, but we also get a lot of invitations two screenings from outside companies. And one of our board members, Margarita Cortez, was the publicist for a documentary called She's Beautiful When She's Angry, which came out a couple years ago. Great title. Yes, um, about the feminist movement in the 1960s. So we had a screening of that. She invited our members to come. It was free. One of our members went and learned about something called the Jane Collective, which is the group of women in the 60s who ran an underground abortion ring in Chicago. Uh, she was inspired by it, thought, you know, this needs to be a movie. So uh, this member, Kate Johnston, took the information to our New Works Lab group, and that is one of our member affinity groups. We have different offshoots of members that kind of meet on their own and work on their own material. And this New Works Lab group is for directors, writers, and actors. They meet twice a month on Saturdays, and they bring in different, you know, 10-page pieces of each other's scripts. They do informal staged readings right there, and then they do a big stage reading at the end of the year. So Kate brought in this idea about the Jane Collective that she developed with Rachel Carey, who's a director. They worked on it in the New Works Lab for months. They presented it to producers at their annual reading. One of our members who is a producer was interested in funding the film. So they ended up bringing the film to fruition. They shot it and then um, it was included at the Hamptons Film Festival. It made its premiere. It's, it's out there in the world. That's awesome. Yeah. I, see, that's what I that's what I like to hear. Like stuff that help people get stuff done. Yes, you know, exactly. Um, because I think we spend a lot of time patting each other on the back. Like mm -hmm. I said, in a lot of platitudes and inspiration, and it makes you feel good about yourself. But you know, unless it's actually giving you uh, advice or giving you tools that are actually going to help you on a set tomorrow mm -hmm. or get your whatever project made right um i, I find them kind of useless yeah. you know um so it, it's great to hear about that stuff yeah. and and just you know uh, i will say too that anybody who wants to attend the networking events they do throw some swell parties thank you thank uh, you you were at our night out in january yes right? i yeah. was and uh froze my tail off to get there. <laughs> it was very cold and uh it was great though it yeah. was great uh and i was uh, very happy to see uh, not only just a gaggle of women, but also a bunch of men there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, w we need each other mm -hmm. and uh, we're not going to get better until that happens. Yeah. Um, but so let me ask you this question. So you've been, how long have you been working for these guys? Uh, about four years, okay. over four years. Yeah. So um, what kind of advice would you give somebody? Say there is, and I hope there is, because like I said, I've had a lot of women on the show and one of the reasons I've had a lot of women on the show is because I want everybody to learn from everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, these shows about film, they do tend to be real dude oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, they And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm, I am one myself. You're allowed. Uh, but <laughs> I think it would be great if somebody here heard a woman's perspective uh, on directing or writing or something and yes. was inspired by it. And, you know, it doesn't matter what gender they are kind of thing I, I think it's it's great to hear all sorts of perspective and i said to when i had tammy minoff on the show mm -hmm. i don't know if you know who she is but she won best feature at the soho international film festival and we were talking about directing and i said you know what you did something in your film i never would have thought of because it happens in a ladies room and i'm I, i'm not allowed to hang out in there right. <laughs> so uh you know and it was like a great little scene and and part it was a character moment and i thought yeah. man you know uh i didn't think of that so i think 
the more of this we get, the better. We're going to get better stories. We're going to yes. get, like, in the story they just mentioned about the Jane collection, I didn't know that existed. Exactly. exactly. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people do. No. You know, and it's great that somebody um, is bringing that to light mm -hmm. uh, so that, um, you know, we can know about that stuff. I, and I think that goes for uh, anybody who's sort of out of the mainstream right now. Um, but what I was, all that prelude is, is yes. to say, what kind of advice would you give somebody who, you know, maybe they're... Um, Maybe they're looking to, uh, you know, get into filmmaking or they're new to New York or, you know, they're thinking, uh, you know, this this NYWIF thing sounds like something I might want to be a part of. Right. Like, w what kind of advice would you give that person? I think you really have to find your tribe. Um, it's a pretty small, tight-knit community, uh, but it is, you know, you can break into it, but you have to put yourself out there. You have to start going to these events. Um, I know you said that sometimes it feels like it's just a bunch of parties and yes and I agree but there are some more targeted networking events like some of the ones that we offer and I always suggest going there you know and being ready you know be ready to talk about yourself know what you're interested in know what kind of content you want to create you know it's one thing to say I'm a filmmaker all right well documentary all right documentary what kind of topics are you interested in short feature are you looking to do something that would be ideal for public television are you looking for something for a festival run you know, if it's narrative, get some sense of what your style is and who you are and, and who your background is and ready, be ready to pitch that, you know, be, be ready to talk about yourself. Yeah. Give your elevator pitch, you know, be, sometimes people walk into these things and they say, oh, I want a job, but they can't articulate what that job is. You know, or do, do your they haven't found themselves yet. Yes. And, you know, and I, I, I think you find that through talking to people and by working. But, yes. You know, um, in just trying to, like, experiment and pick up a camera and get out and mm -hmm. do stuff. And, you know, uh, I've, when I had Joseph Ulo from Indie Film Collective on the show, you know, we were talking about, like, this is a tough town. Yeah. You know, New York will kick your butt. Yes. And, you know, it happened to me when I first got here. I felt like I couldn't get arrested. I could not get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know a lot of people who come here have the same experience. Uh, and, you know, but I always tell people, like, if you're not from here, particularly, there probably is a group for you. Oh, yeah. You know, and, th and th there's probably a, a group, a club. There's a meetup online. And, yeah. you know, there might be a bar named after it <laughs> because everybody's here. Everybody's you know? here. And most people are not from here, I find, too. Yeah. You know, there, there's a section of people that, yeah, they're diehard New Yorkers. But a lot of people come here to do this. And I also think there's value, too, in figuring out who you're not. You know, part of that is trial and error and meeting people and thinking, you know, yes, that's what I want to that's what I want my career to look like in 10 years. Or, oh, my God, no, I, I can't possibly picture myself doing that. And yeah, because there's moments. no one way or right way to be a filmmaker. Right. You know, right. and uh, it doesn't matter really what gender you are or anything like that. You have to find like, you know, uh, I've talked about it on the show before, but like uh, you take someone like Catherine Bigelow, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, she's directed. Like I, I call it the the greatest action bromance ever created uh, in in uh, Point Break. Point Break, yeah. But you know, on paper, that doesn't seem like it's not a a, a girls movie. It's no. not like you know, it's not something you you say. Oh, you know, obviously we want a woman direct to direct this. But you know, she found a niche in in, in doing that, and you yes. know, she went on to direct the Hurt Locker, and she, I think mm -hmm. she won an Oscar for it. She did. Um, and y you have to be able to think, I. <sighs> It gets frustrating because I see a lot of these gender politics, ha politics happening about, you know, if you're if the, the protagonist is this, then the director has to be that. Right. Um, and I just like I don't want to see people limited. No. Um, and I want to see people be like, um, OK, I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble with this, but I'm going to broach the subject anyway. And it. And it seems like the forum. So uh, Lena, is it Lena or Lena Dunham? I can't. Lena. Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham. OK, so Lena Dunham, uh, I heard on another podcast was um i don't know if she still is but she was supposed to adapt a book to a uh, film or television and uh, she was gonna be the screenwriter on it mm -hmm. and the screen uh and somebody on the podcast was complaining that the book the subject matter was about people in i think serbia and okay. they were they were like kind of saying uh she shouldn't do this because she's not serbian and it just kind of made me want to smack myself in the forehead. Yeah. Because she's a really excellent writer. Yeah. Like I mean, she's had a that. hit television show. Yeah. She's written and directed films. She's successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like that's what writers do. And I understand what they're, I totally understand what they're saying. I wonder if it were a white man that had gotten that job, if the pushback would be the same. 
I, I honestly, been, I don't, I don't think it would be. I'm it not. It might sure, have been worse. I'm not sure that you she's know? that. She, I don't know. I, know. I mean, I don't know. I'd love to see the script. I, who knows? But but, but people have to have imagination, and that's the whole thing. Is it's yeah. all, it's all, you know, you're using fiction to talk about real issues, and and I just read a quote. I think it was from Neil Gaiman this weekend about fiction tells you tells you the truth through lies, or fiction is a lie that tells you the truth, or something. He's he a, said it way better than that. He's, he's a, a much pretty better, good writer. Much that better Gaiman. writer than I am. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's the that's the idea. Yeah, is that you have to use your your imagination to talk and about these when things. When you limit somebody's imagination, I mean, uh, Edward Albee, you know, pretty good playwright. Mm-hmm. I think he won the Pul- Pulitzer. He said, you know, you have to have hubris. Right. You have to have like you have to be able to write mm-hmm. beyond yourself and think beyond yourself. And I think that when you stop people from doing that, yeah. you're hurting the industry yes. because there's probably something in Dunham's aesthetic or something in her perspective that is lending something new to that story sure. that wouldn't be there um and hubris always sounds you know yes it's a fatal flaw but it's always comes across a lot worse when it's coming from a woman because then she's uppity or you know too aggressive or not qualified but when it's a man it's oh you know he's he's taking a risk i think we have to get over this like if if um especially in the, in the film industry, like this whole thing with women directors, I think we have to just get over it and say they're a director. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what gender they are. And like a, a good director can tell a story. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. And it doesn't matter if it's an action movie or if it's a chick flick roman- mm-hmm. rom-com. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, um, you know uh, Rob Reiner directed some great rom-coms Sure. And he's an old white dude. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Catherine Bigelow directed action movies and war pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it, it's just like you have to respect people's talent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have to get over this. And I and you're right. Like organizations like yours are great because they do something that's needed. It would be great if we didn't need them. Right. But we do. Right. Because you, it, it's... It's unfortunate, but it's a truism that if inclusion isn't forced, Mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. Yes. You know. um, And the more women and and people of color that get these opportunities, the less each individual will be under a microscope when they produce something. You know, we won't have to say, oh, there is that one big movie by a woman this year. Let's break down every single thing that's right and wrong about it. Because if it's one out of 50 films by women this year then it's less of a big deal. You know, we won't put everything under a microscope so much for right. better or for worse. It shouldn't be in, in a in a woman who makes a bad film or, or not a bad film, but a film that doesn't do well. Right. Uh, because the, the Hollywood slogan is that a, a good film is a movie that makes money and a, and a bad movie is one that loses money. Yes. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, Ava DuVernay, she made uh, Wrinkle mm-hmm. in Time. And yeah. I, I don't think it did particularly well. Not as well as they'd hoped, um, no. And, uh, you know, but that doesn't make her a failure as a director. No. You know, and, you know, Steven Spielberg has made movies that didn't do too well, and he's still got a career, Mm -hmm. but I think there is this thing of, like, this, oh, we're taking a chance on a woman director, and, you know, and and if it doesn't do well, then then she gets put in movie jail for, you know, 20 years or something. And we judge the entire gender based on her one film. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, you can, oh, women directors know it. Yes. um, You know, Penny Marshall, who passed away uh, not too long ago, Mm was a great director. Yes. And she directed Awakenings, um, which is one of my favorite Robin Williams films. It's him and Robert De Niro. Yeah, I saw and that a long time ago. It's just a damn good movie. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I didn't care who directed that film. I just liked the movie. Yeah. And uh, my my opinion is that the average per like other if you're in if you're not in the industry, nobody really cares. I don't think do you think people the average audience member cares who directs a film? I think they do more now because it's become so much of an issue in the last few years. Like we we've been talking about this since nineteen seventy seven. I feel like it's hit the public eye maybe in the last three years. So I think it's more people than we might expect, but but no. I, I don't think they care as much as as maybe we wish they did, but you know. Yeah, then, I, I mean, I'm just hoping it, for good movies, that. you yeah. know, like and and I don't care where they come from, and I will continue to support anybody who, who can, you know, get a film made uh, mm-hmm. uh, in the especially in the indie world because it's it's bloody difficult. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and every person I've had on the show, no matter regardless of the gender, is like because I think the audience could learn from them. Yes. And I hope they can. I mean, guys out there, you know, please don't. You know, don't do that thing where you only listen to the dude <laughs> episodes. Uh, listen to the women, too, because they have great stuff to say and they get stuff made. Um, and, you know, check out this organization because, yeah. you know, they're 
they're doing good things for all filmmakers. Yes. You know? Yeah. Most of those panels and workshops that we do throughout the year are open to any gender, and you can all learn something from it. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Um, thanks for having and, me. You know, I know we we got into uh, we got, <laughs> we got into some issues, but I think that's just going to happen. You know, I, I think where wherever you whenever you have women in the title of an organization, people are going to like bully up against it and say oh is it just for women or oh, yeah. you know like what you, you know it, you're being sexist or something like that i, c I come ready for that it's yeah. okay <laughs> that's good um and uh you know um at, at some point you know you guys have me on your podcast and we'll talk yes, about this stuff that's great. you know definitely uh, because uh i want i i just i hope my like i said my mission is that everybody who who listens to this or everybody who's trying to make films trying to create content uh can learn from all mm -hmm. the good all the good stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, before I let you go, tell me if I want to know more or somebody out there wants to know more about uh, you or Nywift, how can they find yes. you all on the web? Um, we are online. We have a great website at Nywift, N-Y-W-I-F as in film, T as in television, dot org, or just Google New York Women in Film and Television. We're also on all social media platforms at Nywift. We're super active on there. So check us out. Follow us. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, thank you. I'm going to wrap up here. Awesome. And uh, I want to say thank you uh, for joining us, uh, taking this trip down the rabbit hole once again. For more episodes of this show, you can always find them on our, our website, which is a uh, brand new website, new-ish anyway, uh, no rest of the weekend podcast.com. You can also subscribe on all the major podcast channels, including Anchor, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Miss Katie Chambers. Thanks so so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. And uh, for Behind the Rabbit Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.